Okay, good afternoon. We are here to start the lecture notes for Power Systems 2, which are the course code EEE242, which will be taught by Dr. William Opari and then myself, Isaac A. Pevensa. The various details are below. So the course outline basically talks about load flow studies, which involves the formation of AC and DC load flow analysis. But basically we are going to consider for this semester AC load flow equations, the Cartesian and then the polar forms of the load flow equations. Then it goes side down iterative method. Then the formation of the Jacobian matrices and solutions using the Newton Raphson's method of digital computer study of load flow. So the aims of studying load flow is one to explain the importance of load flow studies to power utilities and then two is to explain the non-linear nature of the load flow equation three is to formulate the admittance matrix of the power system and then four is to drive simple equations for load flow and formulate them in a fashion suitable for iterative analysis. The solutions simple load to solve simple load sorry flow problems using the Gauss the Gaussidal and the Newton Raphson iterative methods. Then the next one is that we, we are to also perform simple load flow analysis by hand and appreciation by appreciating why computers perform these tasks far better than human beings. And the last one is that we are to carry out load flow study using the power system software. So that is what we are going to consider. In the long run, the next thing is that what is load flow steady? A steady state analysis of a power system during its normal operation is what we call a load flow steady. Then the objectives of the load flow studies is to ensure proper redistribution of the power when a line is being removed from the main system for maintenance. For the power system planning in order to be able to accumulate future expansions and we also do that load flow studies to ensure that power system plants is not to run above the nameplate written and also to assess the contingencies or contingence fault condition which may potentially lead to wide scale system outages so we don't want to have a lot of system outages on our lines so therefore we have to go through that then the load flow studies we also have some information produced from the load flow studies will be the voltage magnitude and then the phase angle at voltage at various buses and when we talk about the buses we are looking at the bus bus as per the power systems then there, we will also be looking at the real and then the reactive power flow in the elements the reactive power loading on generators and then the information used for the load flow studies will also be branch list of the system connections 
which associated resistances and then inductances voltage magnitude and then phase angles at one bus which is the reference point of the rest of the power system then the real power generated and the voltage magnitude at each generator bus so therefore the next thing we'll be doing is also to also make sure that the real and the reactive power demand at each load bus is known so bus specifications should have the following four quantities as per the power system if any of these two quantities are specified the other two must not be specified so assuming we have some p and then q which are specified quantities at load which are called the p q buses p and q are specified at generators which are called the PV buses. System losses are accounted for by making one bus the slag bus and then the other two are specified. So the next thing we are going to do or the first thing we will be doing from this whole topic will be bus admittance matrix. We have learned matrices in the engineering mathematics class. Therefore, I entreat each and everyone to involve him or herself in this. The admittance Y of a transmission line is the inverse of the impedance of that transmission line. So we we'll say the admittance, which is also known as Y, we are trying to say that Y is equal to 1 over z but what you have to also notice that when we talk about the z which is the impedance z is also equal to r which is the resistance plus the jxl where we are looking at jxl to be the reactances then a transmission line with a resistance of 0.5 and then x of 0.15 this will have an impedance of r plus gxl which means that our r is 0.05 plus g 0.5 and when we solve that we will get a value which we will now have to divide 1 over the z which will give us the admittance so when we solve that in the equation below we are going to get 2 minus j6 which is equal to 6.6 6 6.325 angle negative 71.3 75 degrees so we have the real part and then we have the imaginary part you have to know how to convert from the polar and then to the angular forms so we we'll consider a four bars bar system which means that we have four bars bar station so with this four bars bar station we have bus bar 1 over here, bus bar 2, which is also over here. Then we have bus bar 3 here, then we have bus bar 4. So when we talk about bus bar 1, bus bar 1 is connected to bus bar 2 and at the same time connected to bus bar 3, as you can see over here. When we take bus bar 2, it is connected to bus bar 1. And at the same time connected to bus bar 4 well, and then bus bar 3 when we come to bus bar 3 2 it is connected to bus bar 1 bus bar 2 and then bus bar 4 
Then we'll come to the bus bar 4. That one is connected to bus bar 2 and bus bar 3. So the line that joins bus bar 1 to bus bar 2 is what we call the admittance Y12. And it's the same line. So the opposite of the line, which is also moving from bus bar 2 to bus bar 1, is also called y21 and at the same time we have another line from bus bar one which is also going to bus bar three and vice versa and that line is also called y13 and then y31 then we come to the various bars we see them but then what you have to note and take very critical look at them is that when you take bus bar 1, bus bar 1 has Y10, which is telling us that the Y10 is the bus or the admittance of the bus itself, which has no addition of any other bars so we want to know the total number of bars that are connected to bars bar one then we call it y11 y11 means that all admittances which are connected to bars bar one will now be added together to form y11 for example we have bars bar one when we are talking about the y11 we are going to get what we call y10 plus y12 plus y13. These are the three bus bars which are connected to, or the three transmission lines which are connected to bus bar 1. Then remember that there are also some bus bars which are also going to bus bar one from others which is bus bar two and then bus bar three so we want to know the voltages and the current for that one we'll have to subtract this current which is i2 and then v2 which is also the voltage and then we have another i1 i3 and then v3 which is also going to v i uh, add up to i1 and then v1 so for at this moment i want us to take a critical look at them so when we take any of the current we say that current is equal to voltage times the admittance so if voltage times admittance then we are going to add all voltages and admittances that are connected to that line but remember when we take y10 it has its own voltage which has not gotten any additions from anywhere which is v1 but when we come to y12 which is this y12 has its own voltage to be v1 but remember there is another voltage from v2 which is entering this line so we take that one to out which makes it v1 minus v2 into brackets y12 then plus we have this bus bar 3 which is also coming to bus bar 1 so when we when we do that we are going to get y13 into bracket v1 minus v3 so i want students to do as an assignment for i2 please don't cheat just concentrate and then submit your assignments. Thank you.